Well, good morning, Miramar, and welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Tamara G. Don't forget, check us out on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City of Miramar. And we have with us one of our hardest working commissioners, Commissioner Alexandra P. Davis. She is hosting this weekend, Taste of the Caribbean Islands. It's happening Saturday, June 25th. Welcome back to the show, Commissioner Davis. Uh, you've got a lot going on this weekend. Yes, we have a lot of different activities, but of course, this month we're celebrating Caribbean American Heritage Month mm -hmm. in the city of Merriman, of course, across the country. And we are culminating our events this weekend with the Taste of the Caribbean Islands. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be at a new location at Biscaya Park. And for those that don't know, it's at 14200 Southwest 55th Street in the city of Miramar. And we're also extending the hours compared to last year. This is from two to 10. Okay. Because we have other features now. This year we have a book fair, an art fair, and culinary demonstrations from well-known Caribbean chefs. So oh, that's wow. gonna be a really nice aspect uh, that will take place between the hours of two to six. And then six to 10 is the main featured acts and the concert. Um, but we're going to have a lot of food trucks, novelty items, you name it. It's going to be at Biscaya Park this Saturday. And for those, again, who don't know, you can look at uh, see Biscaya right up of I-75. It's that beautiful park. That, it's a big park. A lot of people don't, it's kind of, look, as we say, it's kind of in the cut. A lot of people don't know about Biscaya, but it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, has a community center there that you can walk in and you can do all of these uh, different events within these tastings and these uh, seminars. So why did you guys decide to open it up kind of this year, Commissioner Davis, and do a little bit more than just the concert? Yeah, I just felt that when you're talking about taste of the Caribbean islands, yes, it's not just about the culinary aspects, but the taste is in the sounds, which we have the concert, the taste is in the, the artwork, all these flavors that make us Caribbean. And of course, uh, book literary uh, things that, that we do. Um, a lot of it is uh, geared towards children. So we do have a children's corner where we'll have uh, face painting and balloon making, you know, art. And we have, uh, again, some children's books, uh, children's readings uh, that will be taking place. So we want to have a holistic approach where we'll have the whole family come out instead of just at the end, you have a concert, you know, so it brings the children, the elderly, the in-between, and everybody has something that they can see, do, feel, taste, you know, at the Taste of the Caribbean Islands. And the great thing about it is it is free. So people can bring their family, they can bring their friends. Um, tell us some of the islands that are going to be uh, kind of uh, talked about or that you can do those tastings with. Well, there's different fusions of Caribbean. I think one of the uh, chefs mentioned the Calypso stew that's going to be done. Uh, another person did a, a kind of a conch salad uh, uh, fusion there. And, and so this, uh, in spite of the demos, which, you know, there's limited quantities for those, but we'll also have various food trucks from the various islands, whether it's Latin uh, flavored food or uh, Bahamian, Haitian. So all that's going to be there for folks to taste and and to to purchase these uh, food items from the food trucks so right. we're looking forward to that and as I mentioned about our talent in terms of our artists who will be performing we'll have the Junkanoo they're out of of course Bahamian culture we have uh, the Muckle Jumbis in, in U.S. Virgin Islands uh, okay. the stilt walkers they're always a hit with the crowd we also have out of Bahamas, Julian Belief. It's a high-end entertainer that is really high energy. And uh, we have Gio Paul, a Latin, and his Latin soul band will be there performing. Uh, we have DJs from the Miami Dream Team will be there spinning the records. And uh, we'll have uh, Lee Kelly and his reggae band there as well. So it's gonna be a whole day of events from two to 10. And we really want the families to come out and enjoy. I guess, you know, the Caribbean folk hail from various different speaking uh, islands, uh, meaning uh, the French, the Dutch, the English, and the Spanish. So it takes into consideration all aspects of Caribbean living. And that's what we're trying to do 
Um, we want folks to come out with their flags, their rags, their colors. And we've got a lot of participation this year from the various concert generals. They're going to have concert exactly. general row. And so it's going to be really exciting. Even yeah. if you're not from the islands, definitely you want to come and learn about the culture. <laughs> Absolutely. And bring your blankets, bring your chairs so that you can sit yeah. and enjoy the concert and uh, just enjoy the day again from two until 10. But you do want people to register, correct, Commissioner Davis? Yes, we want to have an idea of the number of folks who will be present. So you'd register at Taste Carib Islands with an S dot eventbrite.com. So once again, Taste Carib Islands dot eventbrite.com and there's also a phone number for those who want to call to get information it's 954-602-3178 okay and people can always go to to miramarfl.gov uh, it's right there on the home page i just saw it so uh, they can register that way as well and again it is a free event happening this saturday june 25th now you have another free event commissioner davis that is happening on thursday just before the weekend events uh, and this one has to do with business tell us a little bit about it yes this one is called our biz fit series a business fitness and so we are taking uh, our office of economic development and we've vitalization on the road on our road tour. So the first stop on our road tour is going to be Lamar Plaza. Lamar Plaza is at uh, between 6418 and 6428 Pembroke Road and it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So we'll be at the Lamar Plaza talking to our businesses, listening to their concerns, making sure that folks know that we're available for them of any of their business needs. We also want folks to come out. We're going to have prizes, giveaways, and they can shop local. So once again, that's Lamar Plaza at 6418 to 6428 Pembroke Road. Uh, and that's this Thursday, June 23rd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you have a couple of other ones also where you guys are going to be going on the road, right? Yes. So the road tour will also be extended a week out from that at the Huntington Square number three at 3350 Southwest 148th Avenue. So that's Huntington Square on June 30th, same time, 10 to 1. And then the final stop on our road tour is Marabella Plaza. That's at 2501 Southwest 101st Street. And that's July 7th. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Perfect. And of course, if you are a business uh, in those plazas, please stop by from 10 to 1 on those days. Uh, speak with the commissioners, speak with uh, the economic development team and, you know, give them your concerns or any uh, suggestions or, you know, see if you can help in any kind of way uh, to make those businesses even more profitable uh, for the city of Miramar. So just stop by. Uh, during that BizFit tour. So thank you very much, Commissioner Davis. Uh, again, the busiest commissioner. <laughs> she is out here on these roads and doing it for Miramar. So thank you very much, Commissioner Alexandra P. Davis. And don't forget again, Taste of the uh, Caribbean Islands happening Saturday, June 25th. And then the first BizFit tour is happening Thursday, June 23rd, uh, two days before the a big event on Saturday, and that is going to be uh, at which plaza again? Lamar Plaza, Lamar Plaza uh, on Pembroke Road, the 6400 block there. Okay, sounds good from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for watching the show. I'm Tamara G, your host. Until next time. And today we're going to be speaking with a very special guest about National HIV Testing Day, June 27th, coming up very soon. We have Drexel A. Shaw. He has a Master's of Public Health. He's also a National HIV Liaison for CVS Health. And he also has been doing this for many years. He brings an extensive HIV community experience as a patient advocate community health education advisor, public health program administrator, and program evaluator, and has managed CDC and state and local grants aimed at ending the HIV epidemic in the United States. So welcome to the show, Drexel, how are you? I'm doing great. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Listen, we're going to get right into it because we want to know, you know, obviously we know that HIV is not eradicated. Um, it's not pandemic 
like it was when it first came out. But why do you think that those numbers actually have gone down over the last two years? So around HIV testing, there has been a significant drop in HIV testing due to COVID. And so between 2019 and 2020, the number of CDC funded tests dropped nearly 47%. And so to paint a picture for you, during that time at the stay at home orders, no one was, you know, going in for HIV testing, a lot of the, you know, traditional testing venues were closed. And so there was a sharp decline in testing, but it wasn't really due to because more individuals were getting tested or services were better. It was more like individuals were not getting tested at all. And so with that, testing is more important than ever before. Um, just to give you another data point, you know, the state of Florida had the third highest rate of new HIV diagnoses um, back in 2020. And so um, that is a number that it's way too high up and we've got to do something about it. Wow. And you're right. Okay. So let's get right into it because we're talking about our great state of Florida here. And let me just give, they actually gave some numbers to me. The U.S. average rate of infection is 13 per 100,000 tested, but in certain cities, it is much higher. Atlanta, the diagnosis rate is 44. Houston, 36. Miami, 55. New York, diagnosis rate is 23. And Orlando, diagnosis rate is 36. Why is Miami, and you know, we're in South Florida, we cover uh, the Palm Beaches as well, uh, Broward County and Miami-Dade County. Why is Miami's diagnosis rate so dang gone high? Well, one of the biggest thing out there, you know, relates to HIV specifically is the stigma around the condition of HIV. And so you, there's a whole generation of individuals who, when they think about HIV, they view it as a disease that at one point was a death sentence, but now um, that we have preventable medications that can prevent HIV, we have safe and effective therapies um, that can treat individuals living with HIV so they can live a long and healthy life. And so stigma is still associated um, around um, HIV where individuals are more, you know, not really focused on getting a test in a lot of times there's individuals who feel as though, you know, if I go into a specific testing center, um, individual know that, hey, I'm part of this part of community or I'm not that kind of person. And it's really breaking down those walls of, of stigma. And this is what um, our collaborations really focus on, um, which we'll get into. All right. But, you know, it's one thing, Drexel, because, yes, obviously at one time or another, when HIV first came out, it was people thought it was geared toward one segment of the population. But we should know now, even with the COVID epidemic, that it, it's a pandemic. You Anybody can get it. It's not something that just you know, picks out this person, this person, this person, it, 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 and what does that mean uh, if you get it? That, who, who thinks any kind of way about anyone, you know? And so, you know, that's, so, that's a, such a good point. You know, I remember, you know, a couple of years ago when I just got into the field, you know, I remember having to, as a community health worker, having to, you know, tell an individual, you know, they had tested positive, you know, for HIV. And this was a 16 year old at the time. And I remember, you know, that individual just not knowing what HIV was. They never heard about it. They were never educated about it in their schools and at home. And so I had to, you know, provide that education and get that individual linked to a provider so they can start on, you know, treatment. And it was really mind boggling. I'm like, wow, we really have to do a lot around the education awareness side. And that's where we really hope with this partnership um, around HIV testing day that we'll get into that. I mean, that it's really important um, that individuals not just get tested, but know that there's available options, regardless if you test you know, negative for HIV or positive for HIV. Right. Uh, well, let's talk about the initiative. So obviously, you know, June 27th, we want everyone to get tested. How is CVS helping out with that? And how is the word getting out besides what we're doing right here um, to, you know, make sure people get tested? Yes, just a great. So to really recognize National HIV Testing Day, we've launched a collaboration with Gilead to offer no-cost HIV testing at participating minute clinics uh, at CVS Health Hub locations. And so between June 29th and July 13th, um, an individual can go in and get an appointment and get tested at one of those locations. And so it expands um, not just within a couple of the key markets that we're focusing on this pilot with, but also uh, Miami specific and some of the participating locations in Broward County. Okay, that's amazing. And so now is this a swab test or is this a blood test? And so depending on the location um, where an individual go, uh, 
it could differ, um, but most of it would be a blood draw specific to these health hub locations. Okay. Now we know, Drexel, too, that testing is the first step to knowing your status. Well, how is your organization helping those who want to be tested, but just are too afraid to show up? Like, and it's so weird, you know, as health professionals, you guys are, you're not, you're not supposed to tell anything. So it's really, you know, it's supposed to be confidential. And I think people still have that um, fear that it won't be confidential. Well, the great thing about it is that our many clinic um, staff are well trained to be able to, you know, deliver and conduct an HIV test in a confidential, you know, manner, as well as follow up, you know, within, with that in particular individual. And the great thing about it is around um, visiting one of our clinics, it's not your traditional testing venue. And so a lot of individuals who might have that stigma or stigma towards around getting tested, you know, they'll be able to test in a safe environment where, you know, individuals go to CVS, not just, you know, uh, for their vitamins and, you know, different prescriptions, but also for COVID testing and vaccines. And so it's sort of this, the different aim and a different group of individuals we're trying to reach with this partnership um, really to increase testing and education around HIV. Is there any age group? Drexel, that you guys are targeting, or is it just anyone, um, you know, that is out there in general? So specifically individuals for this particular um, partnership between June 29th and uh, July 13th will be individuals 18 years and older. So you have to be 18 years or older to uh, participate in the voucher program. Okay, sounds good. And again, Drexel just mentioned how uh, from June 29th to July 13th, you can walk into a minute clinic. Uh, do you have to have an appointment for that? to get it for yeah. free. Yes. And so that is um, uh, something we just want to mention on there. So what an individual can do is actually we have specific sites, particularly for Miami, where an individual in Border County can get tested at cvshealth.com slash end HIV. It's a mouthful, but it's cvshealth.com slash end HIV. And so an individual can find more about um, this voucher program as well as schedule an appointment. And so through that site, allow an individual to schedule an appointment um, at one of those health hub locations, as well as if they don't have internet access, um, they could just um, go to one of those locations um, and have the ability to speak to one of the minute clinic practitioners about the program and they'll get them set up with an appointment. All right, sounds good. If you're just tuning in, we are speaking with Drexel Shaw. He brings extensive HIV community experience as a patient advocate, community health education advisor, a public health program administrator, and a program evaluator. Uh, he is speaking today. Uh, he is the National HIV Liaison for CVS Health and is available today to tell us all about what is going on, uh, particularly with the National HIV Testing Day uh, that is coming up very soon. And it's so funny because I'm, I'm an opposite person. Whenever there was a, a health fair or anything and they were doing free HIV testing, I immediately went and got tested. Like I'm that person that goes towards it. And most people, when they see that, they are like, nah, never mind. But I'm also a person who would like to know because, you know, the earlier you know if there's something going on, the better it is for you, right? Yes, I would agree. I would also like to call, you know, the attention really to the populations that have really been impacted the most, um, you know, by the HIV epidemic. And it's really our underserved. Um, populations within the urban communities in Miami and Broward County. It's really, we're talking to our, our Black and African American individuals, our Hispanic Latino individuals, as well as our individuals part of the LGBTQ plus populations harder than ever before. Um, these in the individuals in these populations, like myself, have really, you know, been affected dramatically by HIV. And it's, you know, opening more opportunity for testing and educating, you know, around other preventative options like PrEP, um, in our communities can really get the word around to help reduce, you know, not just stigma, but for individuals to actually access testing and screening, you know, opportunities in the community. And Drexel, um, I know that you had mentioned earlier that, you know, a lot of people think that HIV has gone away or it's not as prevalent as it was before. And that's only because there have been so many advances uh, when it comes to medicines and things you can do. Uh, besides prevention, but also once you find out that you're positive, you know, there are things you can do. I personally know someone who has lived with HIV for 30 years and is doing fine. And, but, you know, on the medicine, taking uh, the regimen and doing well. 
I have a cousin who I believe she is uh, about 25 years uh, with HIV and is doing fine. So, you know, there's also that message to give out as well that, as you mentioned earlier, it's not a death sentence anymore. Exactly. And so, you know, individuals living uh, with HIV, you know, they're living long and healthy and thriving lives. I've spoken to, you know, hundreds of individuals, you know, uh, living with HIV and they're living healthy. And, you know, it's for many at one point, you know, they didn't know what their next step would be, but, you know, really through, you know, just having the right individuals in your corner, having a provider that listens to you, knowing that, you know, you're, you're going to be okay. Um, this is really the first step of the journey, you know, first acknowledging, you know, that, that you're living with the virus, but you can um, live a healthy life and, you know, they're thriving and they're participating as people like living with HIV are participating in society just like you and I. So, you know, it's nothing that separates us at all. Right, right. You get married, you have children, you pay taxes exactly. like the rest of us. As, you know, one also, you know, point I would like to hone down last is really the emphasis on this concept of you equals you. And so okay. uh, really this concept came around a couple of years ago with HIV. And so it goes on undetectable equals untransmittable. And so that means people who maintain, you know, an undetectable you know, amount of virus in their blood um, can actually sexually transmit the virus to others. So an individual that is, use the term virally suppressed, um, uh, that's living with HIV, they are pretty much virtually uh, um, have the chance of actually transmitting the virus to uh, a sexual partner, which I think is amazing that we have reached so far in, you know, the science of HIV that we're able to, you know, treat individuals living with HIV and they're not able to spread the virus at all. So that's awesome. Right. That is awesome. And the only way you're going to know is if you participate in getting tested. And so National HIV Testing Day is happening on June 27th. And as Drexel mentioned, CVS is doing something very special. Again, give those dates, Drexel, and how people uh, can make that appointment to get their free testing. Yes. So uh, on your smartphone, tablet, computer really go on www.cvshealth.com slash and HIV Miami to find out more and schedule an appointment during that window time between June 29th through July 13th. Also, if you don't have access, like I said, to any internet, you can go to one of those participating uh, CVS Health Hub uh, locations and ask minute clinic practitioners about the HIV screening voucher program and they'll get you started. All right. Sounds good. All right. So listen, if you're out there and you've been wanting to know your status or you just want to keep knowing your status, uh, please participate, make that appointment, or you can walk in and ask about it and then make the appointment then uh, if you don't have internet access. But that is uh, an appointment, a free um, HIV test. And so that way, uh, CBS Health is doing their part. The Minute Clinics are doing their part to help in uh, HIV, and we want you to do the same thing. So thank you very much. Drexel A. Shaw, he has a master's of public health. He's the national HIV liaison for CBS Health. Any more information that you want to give out there, Drexel, is where people can go um, to find out anything else about HIV prevention. And so our CVS, you know, health websites have information um, about HIV as it relates to PrEP on the prevention side, as well as treatment. And so if you type in cpshealth.com says so HIV, you'll find other information around HIV, as well as our, our you know, federal partners, cdc.gov. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Drexel. We certainly appreciate you being with us today uh, and giving us all this information. And again, it is cbs.com backslash, uh, or is it cbshealth.com backslash NHIV? Yes, yeah, cvshealth.com slash NHIV Miami. HIV Miami, that's right. Okay, and of course that covers all of uh, South Florida. Oh, here, here's another question before I leave. Could someone from Broward go to? Uh, yes. Yeah, so well, I know you said I, you have that some hubs in Broward. Yes, yeah, so there is some in Pompano Beach. And mind you, I don't want to get my locations confused, but I do know South Florida pretty well. Yeah, okay. Um, so Miramar. So Pompano Beach. There's, okay. there's Pompano Beach, Miramar, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. So this Broward County. Um, if when you go on that micro site and HIV Miami, if that location's not there, as I said, they can, you know, just show up to one of those health hubs within that location. As long as it's a health hub within that region, they should be able to get a test. All right. Sounds in charge good. Of that location. 
we thank y'all for having locations in Miramar because we all know it's right here in Miramar. So thank you <laughs> once again. We certainly appreciate it. Drexel A. Shaw, uh, National HIV Liaison for CBS Health. Thank you so much for being with us today.